Tony Quant from Wired TV alongside Alex Reid, who will be making his return to MMA in Bellator in July. Alex, it's wait, been a wait, wait, here we go. They didn't put my picture on it, but I understand why, because, listen, I consider myself a pioneer of the sport, but there are the MMA Puritans out there who think I'm a joke, and, and I do bring a bit of pantomime, but first and foremost, I am an athlete and a martial artist. Yeah, I've had some weird, wonderful stuff going on in my life, but if I'm such a crappy athlete, why have I been offered out by 12 of the, some of the best fighters in the country? And actually, there's a few other guys around the world who've offered me out. Why? Because, love me or hate me, I bring mainstream media. And it's, I've also proven whatever I might, my crazy life might be outside of the cage. When I get inside that cage, I am a consummate professional. I've had more than 300 competitions at the highest level all around the world. And I've got a little bit of a grudge and my, myself because I've, there's a small part of the community in the mixed martial arts community who I consider my peers think I'm a bit of a joke so I'm not doing it for them but I'm doing it for myself to get back in there I've got offered a fight that I, I could go and work on a building site it's been quite public knowledge I don't have a lot of money at the moment all the fabulous court cases and shenanigans I've been involved in but I've been offered by the promoters of Bellator attack promotions to come back and why not it's something i love i'm 40. i don't claim to be the baddest ass on the planet but who knows this, i'm just going to see how it goes they've signed me they want to sign me for a free fight deal i say look let's see how we get with the first one and we'll take it from there i've given a lot of interviews to different mma people websites what have you and um i've been called out by a lot of really good guys and the people, their fan base will say, yeah, smash him. If you, if you don't knock him out, don't pay him. You know, I'm like, hang on a minute, guys. Listen, I'm, I'm 40 years old. I haven't, I haven't really been training for two years. I took three kickboxing fights two years ago. But I haven't done MMA for four years. In fact, the last time I did MMA was here. And you know, I almost did that because I didn't, I didn't come in here for Sambu. I, I don't come here to win, I come here to escape my crappy life because funny enough all of this media onslaught was horrible and the most peaceful place in the world is in there getting punched in the face but that's not conducive of a professional athlete i was going to the gym for therapy but i wasn't happy but now now you know i'm a little bit different yeah i'm a little bit scared because i've done it for a while but weirdly although i'm scared i'm really happy this is an opportunity for me to turn my life around, and I'm putting everything I have into it. I'm training like a badass, and I can't wait to show what I've got on July the 16th. Woo! And is, is most of this given, you know, you, you've mentioned that everyone, everyone of his uncle's been calling you out. So is that really sort of the, the driver? Is that really helping you to get back in there? What is the main driver for you returning? You've been out since Bama 11. What is the main driver? Is it money? Is it the fame? Or is it like you just said, it's the release of getting away from everything else? It's just you in the cage come fight night and you just get to be as pure as Alex Reed can be without all the other stuff. Well, look, money is a, is a bit of a factor, but not, it's not so much. I've never been money motivated. I want, I'm, a, I'm a man and I want to provide. I need a purpose. And what can I do? I can, like I said, I can go and work on a building site. But that's, I believe I have the opportunity of who I am. Again, love me or like me, I am the most famous cage fighter in the UK. I ask this question all the time. Maybe for some of the wrong reasons, but I have put my heart and soul in there. And listen, if I can, I spoke to the promoters of Attack Promotions who are running Bellator UK. I said, look, ultimately, I don't, I'm 40. I don't know how, I don't know how I'm going to get on. You know, look after me. I don't want to face the baddest ass on the planet, but let's see what happens. You know, they said, look, if you do well, we, we could. Figure, you know, you never know what could happen. So it's an opportunity for me to get back to prove my family away from all the crazy crap that I've been involved in, that I'm an athlete, a good guy, and make, and restart my career in a positive way. Sports, fitness, health, martial arts, which it's all been put to one side for other crazy shit.
So obviously you said you haven't been in the gym for quite a while, but obviously you probably must have still been working out. When you say you've not been in the gym for a while, do you mean sort of full contact sparring and the yeah. likes? Listen, I'm always in the gym looking reasonably fit. And I've, for once, I've decided to get show muscles, not go muscles. I've never been interested in show muscles, but they're no good. Right now, I've got being body beautiful. It's all about being functional. I hurt, I hurt a lot. I actually wake up every morning a little bit scared. A bit like, you know, your first day at school when you're a kid. Oh God, it's a, school. It's a little bit like that. And I'm, the experience I've got, I'm, I'm in the gym with guys sometimes actually more than half my age, less than half my age, sorry. And um, they're, they're, beating, they're beating the hell out of me. And I'm like, what's this all about? It's just, but I have the experience and every day I feel I'm improving. I mean, we, a month and a half ago, I was getting such bad pain in my back. That's going now. That's crazy. So, yeah. <laughs> weirdly, I thought the best way for me to get fit and healthy again is to get back, to get in, back the in the cage. <laughs> because through adversity, you have to find the answer. I've, I've set myself the ultimate challenge to get in a cage and fight someone. And listen, you could go to work in an office and do a shitty job and maybe get away with it. You might not, but your boss might get angry. Look, I go to work in a cage in front of, let's face it, 20,000 people at the O2 Arena. One and a half million people probably in Channel 5, and I don't know how many millions of people around the world. That's a big, yeah. like, you've got to sort your shit out, otherwise you're going to foul it out, and it's not a nice place to be. So, I mean, well, it's a great place to be yeah. if you do the work yeah. and perform well. And a lot of fighting is said to be mental part of it as well. How are you sort of mentally? Are you completely just focused on July? You've obviously got all this stuff outside. How yeah, tough is it? Because, you know, you're in the press pretty much I every mean, day if needs I mean, be. But yeah, I am at the moment. And I can understand why Bellator are using me because, let's face it, and if I, would, if I was a manager to one of these other fighters, I'd be doing the same thing. Let's, let's fight Alex Reed. Let's not even ask for a purse. Let's just be, because I will get the mainstream frontline headlines in newspapers. And it's kind of crazy. I kind of like, hang on a minute. I, I don't want it to turn. I can see why I'm not on here. Because I don't want to turn it into the pantomime Alex Reed show. And it will become that. And I'm not actually proud of that because I, these are all studs to me. A lot of them are my teammates. I'm like, hang on. I, let's, let's forget about all that silly stuff. People still ask me certain stuff about my personal life. Come on, man. I'm an athlete, you know. Listen, a part of me likes the fame and the glory, but I don't like the fame and the glory for the crap. I like the fame because I've achieved something good. Yeah. And I mean, what, what's changed now from when you first got into the sport to coming back to the sport in your sort of mind? What are the, the sort of main things driving you to get back into that cage? Uh, I'm still young. I'm 40, although I feel old sometimes. In my heart, I'm about 10 years old. And I've got, I want to get out there this is the sport of the future. Bama, Bellator, UFC, whatever you call it. It's, we're all brothers and I think, I want to be part of this for the rest of my life and I've still got an opportunity. I reckon I could do this for another year, actually doing this. But then I want to be, I want to be doing more what you're doing. I do a bit of that already. I want to be promoting. I want to be opening my gyms at the face of it. The Joe Rogan, I, I see myself doing that. And how difficult was it walking back into the gym after all that time off, how receptive were the team to you welcoming you back? You're still at London Shoot Fighters, presumably? My, I'm still at Shoot and I train a few other places. I train with Don Charles at Punch London, where actually Paul Daly, who's fighting the same card, just joined. He also trains uh, Roger Gracie, who just won one FC world title. Um, I've always trained there, but Alexi, my trainer, said, no, I'm Mr. Nice Guy, you're a fighter now. I'm not, no more kid gloves. He's, um, he said, you can't, I've trained with the amateurs, because it's like, and the amateurs at London Shoe, they're like, hard, they probably beat most of the guys here, they're like badasses. But now I'm, it's scary, man. <laughs> I'm like, oh. But listen, it's also, I feel purpose. Yeah. I've just got to get my head down. It's like Rocky said, just got to keep your head down and keep moving forward. I live my life like a Rocky film. Yeah. And how have you noticed the training coming back? Have, have you found it just as easy, or are you, you sort of picking oh, up new, new aspects of the it's game? It's terrible, because I can't, the guys at shoot, they're, they're on the cutting edge of all the latest technology. I just trained in another gym up north and I was actually ooh, pretty good actually. I actually felt a bit confident because I see how good we are in shoot. Uh, it's scary because I can't do the same things I used to do. I, my hips are gone, 
you know, I'm a bit bashed up, but I'm a lot more cunning. I'm, I've got other tools. I've got wealth of experience and toughness. I'm just using that now. And what do you make of the UK scene since you stepped away and the progression? And more, more importantly, what do you make of the middleweight division and what names out there that have been thrown around are really interesting you at the minute? Hmm. Sorry, that was about three questions in one. <sighs> What's your question? <laughs> what, what middleweight names are the most exciting names for you at the minute on your, for your return bout? It's not, um, there's so many scary guys out there and I don't know, that, and I, I say scary because they're all scary to me at the moment. But I, listen, the person standing here isn't the person who'll be in there. I, I'm like, I'm watching the fights, I'm just cage side, just lovely to watch them. But it's, whoa, whoa, and I'm like, it's, I'm a bit nervy about it. I'm a, I'm a scaredy cat, but I know when I'm in there, I'm a different person. So the names, I don't know, there's so many guys out there. There's some good guys, there's a guy, he was, um, Uh, the guy I think I've got a lot of respect for, and, they, and he, there was, a, I'm an ex-paratrooper, and he's uh, Jack Marshman. Right. And I gave an interview saying that, because I fought both Tom and Xavier who beat him. I said, yeah, that, you know, if I was on, that'd be a great fight. And then what they did, and all of the parachute regiments started slating them. Oh, didn't like that. But I'm like saying, look, I haven't trained, they, they, admit, they admitted the bit where I said, I haven't trained in four years, and he's active and he's a stud. And actually, I'm an advert fan and supporter of him. I think there's so many guys. I mean, like, I just watched Martin Stapleton. Wow, amazing. Yeah, I, I, there's too many to mention. Yeah. And what have you got to say, one last thing, just for the, the haters and all the, the guys who have been giving you stick online and calling you out on all this kind of stuff. What, what have you got to say to those guys? Well, you know what? I, there are haters, but actually, it's weirdly, I, I've, and I do read the comments. And they affect you. It doesn't matter how much you believe in yourself. I'm, I'm the guy who does read them. I don't take it to heart though, because the thing, these guys who call me out, they're on the, they're on the internet saying I'm crap, I'm an arsehole, yada, yada, yada. They're on there for like four or five hours. If I'm that much of a shit, what, really? I don't, I like, look, I get this, not just in martial arts media, I'll get it in the Daily Mail online. I'll get all these horrible people who've got, I, I think they're a little bit sad. Yeah, so is that, in that, is that in a way kind of helped you deal with this kind of stuff? There, there, there is some of the people who say knock him out and they say derogatory things about me and not nice sexual things. I'm like, adds a little bit more power to my punch. It makes me get up in the morning and want to prove people, all right, okay, thank you. Thank you for not believing in me. I'm gonna, I've always been that guy, who, I'll show you, I'll show you.